said I was going to do a paranormal um, a, a video um, last time. I was going to go someplace. I'm still kind of researching some places to go, but in the meantime, I'm going to do another movie review of a um, what's that's fallen into relative obscurity. But um, if you around my age group or a little older and stuff like that, or um, you were an adult in 1976, you might be familiar with a little movie called The Big Bus as the title already um, informed you of what this whole dumb video is about. Um, so uh, anyway, it's a 1976 movie, which you would think is a spoof on the spoof film Airplane, but it's not. It's It came out like um, four years before Airplane did, really, just about that. Um, Airplane came out in 1980, and this film came out in uh, around 1976. So, uh, and it's a it's a movie about a uh, nuclear powered bus called Cyclops, and um, it has um, a relatively all star cast for this the absolute you know bomb of a film. This movie sort of elevates bus drivers to sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, airline pilot status, or that's sort of what's supposed to be funny about the film, which is where the film fails, ultimately. It stars um, Stocker Chani and Joseph Bologna, his last name's Bologna or whatever, and um, she's, uh, her character's name is Kitty Baxter, and she designed the bus Cyclops, which is a nuclear-powered bus, which is a big, in the film it's a big, as you've seen, um, bendy bus, which actually exists, you know, I mean, they have them, um, uh, and, um, double-decker bendy bus, and, and, um, no one, um, actually, just trivia, nobody really knows what happened to the bus after the production of the film. Um, I, what I looked up online is it cost around 250 grand to build, and this is just, you know, probably vague information, and, um, it was a functioning, you know, moving prop, um, there weren't, like, passengers couldn't ride in it, it was just, you know, I think it was mostly an empty, um, uh, basically kind of a shell inside, um, but it was, you know, a functioning vehicle, and, um, um, in the movie, it has all kinds of crazy, you know, it has a swimming pool, bowling alley, state dining room, all that shit. Um, doesn't have that in real life, but um, so people who have come across this movie, as well as myself, and I saw this movie when I was a kid, too, um, as well as, unfortunately, recently, to do this review, um, it, uh, it it's just kind of disappeared. It's hard for something that, you know... Um, you'd think somebody knew what happened to it, but I guess it wasn't of any interest to, um, to you know, talk about it or do that on any kind of DVD commentary or whatever, but, uh, nope, nobody knows what happened to it as far as I know. So, uh, anyway, with that said, um, uh, basically the plot of the movie is, um, Somebody's trying to, this family that's, you know, trying to cause all kinds of disasters and stuff like that. And, you know, like the Titanic sinking and shit. And, um, wants to destroy Cyclops, the bus. So, um, they, uh, the one brother is like, he's on an iron lung. And he, the other one, he's gonna, he's gonna put a bomb on the bus. So that, that's sort of the whole point of it. Um, which is fucking stupid. So, uh, to put a bomb on a nuclear-powered moving bus going across the country, it's, it's, it's like uh, some plan Donald Trump would come up with. But, uh, so, uh, he, uh, it's just, just meaning that it's stupid, of course. It wasn't just Trump bashing, that's probably something he would come up with. So, uh, that happens, and so the, the, the bus is on a non-stop, uh, trip to, uh, from New York to Denver, and, um, a lot of crazy characters, there's a lot of, you know, 
um, uh, well-known actors from the 70s like Vanessa Redgrave she plays like a fashion designer that's kind of for lack of a better term a little promiscuous um, and um, the backstory to uh, Joseph Bologna's character whose name's Dan Torrance he was a bus driver on a bus crash where he ate the foot of a dead passenger so Vanessa Redgrave's character brought like a, a gun on board with the sh in the shoe of the, you know, person that was eaten, whose foot was eaten. So, uh, she's mad about that, and, uh, <laughs> that makes no sense. Um, so yeah, that was supposed to, that was supposed to be the, uh, big, I, I don't know. Um, but there's there's that there's there's nothing cohesive about this film at all, comedically or otherwise. Like even airplanes, like funny, you know. I mean, it's it's completely not woke now and everything, but it's you can watch it. It's still funny. This movie's just like you know you know you're watching something bad. Um, there's there's nothing funny like this is like if you're watching it's not funny you know it's not even it's so bad it's good funny it's just really stupid um you know i mean just to give you an overall like just an overview of the um this the uh backdrop is you know you got a bus that is basically kind of like a cruise ship in a way kind of like an airliner um and it has like a piano bar and um, there's a guy with six months to live and he's you know and then there's this um, just a lot of neurotic people on this you know bus and stuff kind of going on about their problems and and um, this uh, dysfunctional couple like uh, what was it um, Sally Kellerman and what's that guy's name Robert Mulligan anyway he's yeah well, yeah he's on there well, Robert Mulligan. Anyway, but, um, and Sally Kellerman was in, like, MASH, the film. Like, she's been in good stuff, and she, you know, I, I mean, you're an actress, I mean, you know, Stalker Channing's been in good things, you know, like Grease, and she was on the West Wing, I mean, much, years and years later, but she's done good, you know, but this is just, don't know the fuck why. But, uh, Anyway, um, so eventually, like, th this whole, like, the, the bomb goes off. There's not much more to say about this movie. I could go on about a lot of different scenes. Um, but the bomb goes off, and it doesn't, you know, it's a big mushroom cloud doesn't happen. just kind of keeps on going. It's, just, it's all fucked up and stuff. So um, they, uh, the, the evil brothers or whatever they use like an earthquake and um the bus goes like meanders off the road and is sort of teetering on the end of the cliff unrealistically um as the poster goes um i actually have a movie poster i couldn't hang it up behind me because it's too fucking big because this is an original this is what hung in theaters actually because they're so cheap, nobody these aren't even worth anything. But yeah, that's what happened. See, it's hanging on the edge of a it's teetering on a cliff. It wasn't doing it quite that way in the movie. And before that happened, a truck crashed into an old pickup truck. And um, you know, um, so that that kind of just happened. But yeah, here's another view of that. And of course you would expect that to happen when you have a narcoleptic co-pilot like shoulders. Yeah, the co the yeah, co-driver or whatever you want to call him, he would he would pass out um, intermittently. They call him shoulders because he bus would always wind up in the on the shoulder of the road. Um, so that's kind of, that's the movie, you know, after that it just ends and the uh, bus, as it's as the credits are rolling, the bus sort of 
uh, splits in two where the bus, you know, um, bends at. And um, actually, two, the both sections were meant to be driven independently so that it could do that, actually. So they, they built this very expensive vehicle for this shitty movie. And then, like, I mean, you know, just who knows what happened to it. Um, not to get back to that curious, that's the only thing I'm curious about this movie is what happened to them. I would love to go, like, if it was, like, an episode of Pickers and, like, you know, they found, like, this bus in, like, a warehouse or a, you know, a freaking hang, it would need a hangar, actually, it's so big, but it would be funny. Um, I don't know, I never saw this bus turn up ever again, it wasn't, like, in an episode of Knight Rider, they think they would have repurposed it, <laughs> like, you know, like, Kit versus Cyclops, the fucking nuclear bus. Like that would have been cool, but no, no such, no such luck. It's um, so um. Anyway, um, I hope you uh, enjoyed my uh, little take on this this uh, uh, little known film, or maybe perhaps most forgotten film. Um, next time, definitely. Um, I'm on um, in the works here of doing doing a sort of paranormal video or something like that. Well, not something like that, a paranormal video. I'm just um, finding locations I can go to because it's... Pennsylvania is, has these places, but they're just hard to sort of find where I'm at. I'm very far away from a lot of them. And I, um, I work all week. I don't, you know, so um, I have to pick my days to travel and go and do that. That's sort of why that, there's a hold up on that. But anyway, I wanted to... At least, um, having seen this movie just recently, I wanted to uh, do a quick video and um, talk about how fucking absurd it is. Um, I hope everything's cool in your world. Um, this is um, another been another edition of Spectre. I'm DS Yoxheimer. Um, like and subscribe. Um, ring the notification bell if you want to be notified of um, new uh, uploads of my videos and. Uh, don't ever get on a nuclear-powered bus. It just, it's not a good idea.